All right, so welcome, welcome back. And what we're talking about today is the detector, which um, is usually referred to as the demodulator. And the detector is specific, sort of this particular type of AM radio receiver. But um, whatever you'd like to call it, it essentially allows the carrier wave that we've selected out from all the carrier waves hitting the antenna to actually be used and turned into sound by the speaker. So let's take a look at how we do this. So we've got uh, some carrier wave, right, uh, that has come through the LC combination, our tuner, and been selected out versus all the other carrier waves that are hitting the antenna and inducing uh, a voltage wave on that antenna. So bunches of different frequencies here, right, here on the antenna, followed by just one carrier wave coming over here uh, into this last portion of the circuit. Okay, and the part that we're going to talk about today is inside of the dotted green box here. All right. So, what does it receive? Well, it receives a carrier wave, and remember that that consists of uh, an electromagnetic wave that then is converted to an AC signal in our circuit here that has a high and fixed carrier frequency. So that's uh, so one period of it would be like that big, right? A little red line there. And then you'd invert that to find the frequency. But that's, you know, whatever, 90, uh, well, 90 megahertz would be FM band. So I guess like 1200 kilohertz or something like that in the AM band for our receiver here. And AM means amplitude modulated, so the modulation you can see sort of uh, going up and down. The, um, I'll just draw it on there so you can sort of see the, the audio portion of the signal is hidden or encoded in the amplitude variation of the electrical signal. Okay, so that's what it's receiving. Now, what does it hit first? Well, it hits this diode. Okay? And we know that a diode only allows current to go through it in one direction. And so the presence of that diode effectively takes this signal that has both positive and negative voltages and thus causes, uh, would cause current to flow both directions within the circuit. Well, it doesn't allow current to flow one direction, and so the effective voltage signal that gets applied to the speaker and all that, all of that over here, um, on the right of the diagram, just looks like this. It just cuts off the bottom of the signal, and so we're left with a whole bunch of little high-frequency voltage spikes. And the the size of the voltage spikes, or the value of this voltage here, is uh, the amplitude, and that's that's where the the sound information, the audio information, is encoded. Now, uh, all these spikes are happening way too quickly for the speaker to actually respond to. And so what we need to do is actually recover the original audio information that was encoded in this amplitude modulation. And that's where the second two components, um, here and here, this little capacitor and this resistor, that's where they come in. They do filtering. Okay, so they act as an electrical filter. And what they're going to do is they're going to get rid of all of this high frequency stuff and leave us with this sort of slowly, very, relatively slowly varying envelope on this thing. All right. So how does an RC combination actually accomplish that? Well, um, there's a couple of different ways you can look at it. First, you can think about it as, well, um, the RC combination is going to receive a voltage spike. Okay, so say that first one in this this long sequence of them, and that voltage spike is going to cause charge to flow onto the plates of the capacitor, and. Uh, some tiny amount uh, might actually go through the resistor as well, but not very much current will because this resistor is typically like 100 kilo ohms, 
And remember that a capacitor, when it's first charging up, presents essentially no resistance to the flow of current. So basically all of the current comes into this branch right, and starts charging up the capacitor. Now, of course, what we want is for, for us to not see all these individual little peaks. We want to smooth them out. But remember what a capacitor does. If you shove some charge onto it with this initial uh, voltage peak right here, okay? So that sends current down uh, towards the capacitor, and that makes uh, this high side a little bit plus, and that's the low side a little bit minus. When that peak go goes away from the input signal from the antenna, well, mm, that's fine, okay? And we're gonna get another one soon, but when that drop happens, well, suddenly there's nothing holding these charges onto the capacitor. And what it wants to do is it wants the, these opposite charges want to be together, right? They want to cancel each other out. They want to be, they are attracted to one another. And so uh, this capacitor causes current to flow back up this way against what it was before. And what that does is it holds the voltage at the level that it charged the capacitor to, okay? Now, if we waited a long period of time, well, then the capacitor would very quickly discharge and this would come back down to zero, okay? But it doesn't because the carrier frequency, remember, is like a megahertz. So there's only like a millionth of a second between these peaks. And so you use a tiny little capacitor that charges up quickly flattens the voltage in between when it's dropping off from the input electrical signal from the antenna. And so what is actually seen by this portion of the circuit after the filter, the RC filter, is just the uh, peaks with maybe like a tiny little discharge and then peak and then tiny discharge, peak, 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 and discharge in between. It's very clever. Okay, so what it actually you know, vaguely looks like is something like this, and it's a little spiky, and there are some things that can be done to smooth that out further, but basically what you've done is you've recovered the audio information in the amplitude of this signal, and that is the thing that's going to, that, those, those peaks and values in voltage are the thing that are actually going to get sent to the speaker and drive the speaker membrane and create sound. Now, a few other words about this, another way to interpret it. So one, this is a low pass filter. In other words, it passes all the low frequency stuff onto the rest of the circuit, and it gets rid of all the high frequency stuff, all of these da, 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 very high frequency carrier frequency stuff, um, which is, you know, if that's a megahertz, the audio information is no higher than like 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz. And so there's a huge difference there. So all the high frequency stuff just goes this way, all the power associated with that, and completes the circuit to ground. Okay? It never shows up on the speaker. So it either comes through the RC combination and heads to the ground. Another way of looking at that is to go back to our previous discussion of the capacitive reactance, so that apparent resistance of the capacitor that we talked about, so this, this X sub C, and to note that this apparent resistance is inversely proportional to the frequency that's being fed in. So if you've got a signal like this one, where you've got sort of two different frequencies superimposed, at the very least two different frequencies superimposed, but like a really high frequency, fixed frequency, the carrier frequency, combined with a whole bunch of low frequency audio stuff, well then all of the power associated with the high frequency stuff, okay, well the denominator is high, which means that the apparent resistance is low, and so the portion of the electrical signal's power that's associated with that high frequency stuff, the carrier wave, carrier frequency rather, is just going to shoot right through the capacitor branch and complete to ground, right? Again, so that's where the high frequency is going. It's because that this X sub C is low for high frequencies. And if you have low frequency stuff, so you've got the audio frequency stuff, which is much, much, much lower frequency, that means that the denominator here is smaller, which means that this uh, capacitive reactance is higher which means that the low frequency part portion of the signal, that part of the signal's power, is 
going to see a big resistance from this resistor, or sorry, big resistance from this capacitor, and it's going to pass on to the rest of the circuit. This resistance also tends to be very high, and so the power from the low frequency stuff, the audio stuff that we want to hear, goes on to the speaker to be converted into sound. Okay, so that's what we're going to start with next time. We'll talk about the speaker just very briefly and talk about some more complicated receivers and transmitters, but just in block diagram form. And that will bring us essentially to the end of our semester. So thanks for listening and I will see you then.